I am about to betray my country for 20 whole minutes. Well, we call it the Mega Drive here in Britain, which is objectively the cooler name and has no Phil Collins connotations, many more people know it as the Genesis, so that's what I'm going with. Yes, yes, I am a traitor for views. I am basically the Alec Trevelyan of YouTube. I may as well stop pouring tea out at peers as well. Scoundrel that I am. The Sega Genesis holds a special place in the hearts of many gamers, and with good reason. One of the most successful fourth generation video game consoles, Sega's 16-bit platform boasted a wide range of terrific titles. The Genesis's library was so good that the console even briefly outsold the SNES at the height of the console wars waged between Sega and Nintendo throughout the 90s. There's a beautiful sense of agelessness to the Genesis that not many other platforms can boast. I remember playing a lot of these to death as a youth, and even though many, many years have passed since then, these games are still so easy to pick up and play today. The chip tunes are still earworms, while the visuals remain absolutely beautiful, even when compared to how much sweat beads we can see shining off of Kratos' armpits these days. So, if you can get your hands on a Genesis, there's plenty of fun to be had. The only problem is figuring out which of the console's 800 plus titles to start with. Well, old buddy old pal, that's where this list of the best Sega Genesis games of all time comes in handy. Every entry is so good, you'll even buy into Sega's infamous Genesis Does What Nintendo Don't marketing slogan. But Genesis or Mega Drive, what did I used to call it? Let us know down in the comments down below. Number 20, Toe Jam and Earl. Blurring the line between roguelike and platformer, Toe Jam and Earl's hard to classify gameplay failed to attract much of an audience when it first hit shelves in 1991. Critics loved it though, and the game subsequently developed a devoted following among Sega aficionados. It's not hard to see why either. Toe Jam and Earl combines addictive mechanics, an innovative two-player mode, few split-screen experiences are wilder, and above all, humour to dazzling effect. Sure, its 90s slang and garish graphics may have aged like Mickey Rourke drinking a gallon of milk in the sun, but you'll be having too much fun to notice, much less care. The series was last seen in 2019 with the fourth game, Toe Jam and Earl, back in the groove, which bizarrely enough had Macaulay Culkin as an executive producer? Okay. What's next? Corey Feldman directs the next James Pond game? Actually, you know what? I, I would buy that. I'd buy it. I'd buy a lot of that, actually. Number 19. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine Fun fact, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine is a reskinned version of another puzzle game, Poyo Poyo. This lack of originality, further compounded by Poyo Poyo's own indebtedness to Tetris, should make Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine an utterly forgettable affair, yet somehow the reverse is true. The title's core falling block mechanics are as well executed as any entry in the genre, and the inclusion of a Sonic-themed story mode adds an extra dimension to proceedings. There's also a neat two-player versus mode, which gives Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine yet another edge over other, less ambitious Tetris clones. There are some lunatics out there who think Mean Bean Machine is the best Sonic game ever, and while we can't quite agree, especially when Green Hill Man Man exists, I mean, come on, if you want to stretch your brain a little, Mean Bean Machine still keeps us keen after all these years. Number 18, Herzog's Phi. I would like to see this Phi be... If the previous entry on this list of the best Sega Genesis games of all time was a tad derivative, but obviously still good, the same doesn't apply to Herzog's Phi. Technosoft's 1989 effort is widely cited as one of the most influential real-time strategy games ever released, and is credited with inspiring RTS classics such as Dune 2, StarCraft, and Command & Conquer. Fittingly, what made Herzog's Phi such a big deal back in the day is also what makes it so fun to play now. It has a streamlined command system, a gamepad-friendly icon-driven interface, and relatively fast-paced tactical gameplay that's just as satisfying on your own or with a friend. In fact, this game's multiplayer kind of feels like the precursor to taking on your friends for an afternoon in Halo's Blood Gulch. Just hours of killing each other and having a good time. All the cartilage still in your knees and no taxes. Ah, <sighs> good times, guys, good times. Number 17, Castlevania. Bloodlines. Konami developed Castlevania Bloodlines, also known as Castlevania The New Generation in PAL territories, specifically with the Sega Genesis in mind. 
So, while this spin-off follows the same basic platformer template as other earlier entries in the vampire-themed Castlevania franchise, it also more caters to Genesis owners and their love of fast-paced beat-em-ups. The upshot of this is that Castlevania Bloodlines' gameplay has a flavour all its own, while the inclusion of player character-specific branching pathways bolsters its replay value. Castlevania Bloodlines graphics are also up there with the best the Genesis has to offer, with the destruction physics being absolutely wild for the time, another benefit of Konami playing to the strengths and weaknesses of the console from the get-go. Bloodlines has been released in a couple of different ways over the years, and while there are certainly some Castlevania games that feel creakier than the hinge of a vampire's coffin these days, Bloodlines has barely aged a day. Number 16, Gunstar Heroes. Another run and gun shooter, Gunstar Heroes is an uninterrupted thrill ride from the moment players press start. This is true regardless of whether you tackle the game seven stages alone or in two player co-op mode, collecting and combining weapons as you go. Part of what keeps Gunstar Heroes' gameplay feeling fresh is this customization element, and the consistently inventive level design does the rest. Gunstar Heroes looks great too, thanks to developer Treasure's ingenious workarounds with the Genesis' various graphical limitations, but make no mistake, this is one of the very best looking 16-bit games out there, and we'd argue it's better than a lot of games on the following generation too. It also sounds great, but the extreme busyness of everything going on at once may be a little overwhelming for those who didn't grow up on a steady diet of Woolworth's pick and mix. If you can keep up with it, Gunstar Heroes may just pull your trigger. Number 15, Golden Axe. No forts, only axe. And also Giant Amazon Woman. Yeah, my appreciation of Rhea Ripley makes a lot more sense now. The 16-bit era was the heyday of the side-scrolling hack and slash game, which explains why the genre is so well represented on this list that celebrates the biggest hitters on Genesis. One of the very best is Golden Axe, Sega's 1989 arcade port that takes its cues from the sword and sorcery movies popular at the time. The close quarters combat is suitably meaty, and the inclusion of distinct playable characters and rideable creatures staves off a bit of monotony. Plus, the Genesis version of Golden Axe features an extra stage, complete with a new, and impressively tough, final boss. It's also worth exploring other games in the Golden Axe series, like Golden Axe Warrior on the Master System, which featured fairly high up on our last list. Go watch that, go on. Number 14, Contra Hardcore. Has ever a game name been so apt? It's like calling Baldur's Gate 3 Husband Simulator, or Lord of the Rings Gollum, a bag of shite. Contra Hardcore is the first entry in Konami's run and gun franchise to grace a Sega platform, and it proves the maxim that some things are worth waiting for. The game sports several features missing from earlier Contra outings, including four player characters to choose from, a cutscene driven story, and branching level design. Contra Hardcore bundles these innovations with the same intense gameplay that made its predecessors so great, blending eight directional shooting with a new slide attack. The result is one of the greatest, not, not, not to mention hardest, run and gun games of the fourth generation. Contra has been on the wane in recent years, but Contra Operation Galuga is a reimagining of the first game that's due to release next year. Oh, we are so excited for the difficulty discourse on the internet for that for a couple of weeks, can't wait. Number 13, Vector Man. Sega's answer to Nintendo's mega-hit Donkey Kong Country, Vector Man employed pre-rendered 2D sprites to emulate 3D graphics. These visuals were jaw-dropping back in 1995, helping the Genesis to remain competitive against both the SNES and Sony's PlayStation, and retain a retro charm today. Seriously, take a look at some of its animations and try not to be impressed by the wibbly bits. Vector Man does more than just look pretty though, it's also a blast to play, thanks to the morphing abilities of its robot protagonist and its 16 highly varied, secret area filled levels. The latter gives Vector Man plenty of replay potential, and the straightforward control scheme means you'll be more than happy to give the game at least one more go round. While some of the sound effects are a bit too crunchy at times to the point where they sound like farts, Vector Man remains a technical achievement with one of the best double jumps around. Does anybody else remember Batman v Vector Man, Dawn of Justice? The 400 minute long director's cut with an additional 45 minutes of Vector Man teabag in the orphan was a bit much, in my opinion. Number 12, Echo the Dolphin. Here's a pretty bold guess. If you're watching this, you probably have very fond memories of Echo despite getting stuck for hours and hours at a time. Why am I shouting at these diamonds? Why doesn't the dolphin simply lead an insurrection on land? Is he stupid? 
Echo the Dolphin is hands down the most visually impressive game on this list of the best Sega Genesis games. It's also the most unnerving. Whether you're solving puzzles with Echo's Dolphin Song or ramming enemies with his nose, there's just a strange sense of unease about it that really chilled its young players, but kept them coming back to, yeah, just spam Echo at everything. Echo the Dolphin isn't an easy game, in part because, like a real-life aquatic mammal, Echo needs to periodically surface for air. Rather than harshing Echo the Dolphin's mellow but weird vibes, the game's difficulty curve further enhances the overall experience with a serious sense of reward awaiting those who figure it all out. And that partly explains why so many fans are eager for Sega to revive the franchise. Would you like to see more Echo? Let us know. Number 11, Desert Strike, Return to the Gulf. Jake Gyllenhaal's character in Jarhead is just screaming somewhere right now. A shoot 'em up with a tactical edge, Desert Strike Return to the Gulf drops players into the cockpit of an AH-64 Apache helicopter. The overall aim is to bring down the regime of a crazed dictator, however there's more to Desert Strike Return to the Gulf's gameplay than jumping in your chopper and blowing up the bad guys, but there is quite a lot of that too. To win, you'll need to engage your brain as often as your trigger finger by managing your ammo and fuel levels and even choosing the right co-pilot for the mission at hand. Or you could be like us and leave your brain in a jar and blow everything up with some of the wildest visuals committed to 16-bit. Desert Strike Return to the Gulf is one of the deeper, more strategic shoot 'em ups while also offering surface level fun to those who want it. Stick on some T-Rex albums, put on some aviator sunglasses, and bring some freedom. Number 10, NBA Jam Tournament Edition. Few sports games can make their way onto our best games ever lists without some eyebrows being raised. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater would be one, even though we left it off our best PS1 games list, sorry. And maybe also PS2 era Pro Evolution Soccer for letting you play as a bunch of penguins against a bunch of raptors. NBA Jam is another, and is possibly the best basketball game of all time. Few sports games from the fourth generation of video game consoles still hold up today, largely because of the technical limitations of the time. NBA Jam Tournament Edition is a rare exception to this rule, simply because it doesn't really try to ape real basketball. Instead, NBA Jam emphasises superhuman slam dunks and blatant fouls over realism and rules, and is just much more enjoyable for it. Lightning quick hoops aside, the game is also brimming with secret characters and easter eggs to unlock, boosting its overall replayability that makes it feel truly timeless. Boom. Shaka Laka. Number 9, Shadowrun. Shadowrun is one of the most grown-up titles on this list and underscores how well the console catered to older gamers. A cyberpunk-themed action RPG, Shadowrun faithfully recreates the complex mythology and dark tone of the pen and paper role-playing game it's based on. The story is compelling, the top-down exploration and combat are equally worthwhile, and the character customization options are suitably granular. Shadowrun also includes special stages set inside a vast computer network that provide a welcome break from its core gameplay loop. This lends Shadowrun a real air of freedom, a sensation further reinforced by the game's sandbox design. Shadowrun has had a few other video game iterations in the years following, but has been pretty much dead as a series since 2015 Shadowrun Hong Kong, a game which I truthfully didn't know even existed. Number 8. Beyond Oasis no, not a documentary about what Liam Gallagher's been doing for the last decade since Oasis broke up, apart from being a gigantic jeb end, but instead it's one of the best action adventure games on the Genesis that never really gets the flowers it deserves. Sega Genesis owners missed out on SNES exclusive The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, but Beyond Oasis did a decent job of filling the console's Legend of Zelda gap. Hell, Ancient's 1994 action-adventure game even brings some new ideas to the table, as well as an absolute knee-slapper of a soundtrack from Yuzo Koshiro. Notably, the title spices up its hack-and-slash combat with magic-powered special attacks. Beyond Oasis's vibrant anime-inspired graphics are a delight as well, and far outshine a link to the past's more simplistic visuals. It's not quite as good overall, of course, but if you're searching for one of the most underrated games on the Genesis, this is beyond an easy recommendation. Number 7, Flashback The Quest for Identity. US Gold billed Flashback The Quest for Identity as a CD ROM in cartridge back in 1992, and if that was overselling this sci fi game just a little tad, it wasn't too far off the money either. Developer Delphine Software International brought Flashback's player character Conrad and his alien enemies to life via rotoscoping, resulting in the most fluid animations possible with 16 bit technology. 
This heightened sense of realism, coupled with the game's intense platformer action and cinematic storytelling sensibilities, made Flashback the Quest for Identity one of the most immersive titles in the Genesis library. It feels like a successor to early Prince of Persia games, while also teeing up something like Oddworld. Flashback has been ported about 10 times since, and even has a sequel that may be out by the time this video releases. Here's hoping reviewers try and calm the amount of flashback puns they reel off within one single review, eh? Number 6. Shinobi Free – Return of the Ninja Master Shinobi Free – Return of the Ninja Master isn't just one of the best Sega Genesis games of all time, it's also one of the best ninja games of all time too. Though still plenty challenging, Shinobi Free eases up a bit on the punishing difficulty of its 1989 predecessor, The Revenge of Shinobi, with this hack and slash platformer hybrid expanding the number of attacks at protagonist Joe Musashi's disposal. I don't know what it is, but whenever I say slash, I just feel like I'm Sean Connery, I can't not say it like Sean Connery, slash. This means more fun for players, as does the sequel's faster paced gameplay. Shinobi 3 even features special stages with Joe on either horseback or motorised surfboard that encapsulate the franchise's welcome pivot to more up-tempo level design. Shinobi purists may adore the earlier entries in the series more, but for us there's just a bit more of a fun factor here. We only need to take a couple of painkillers after playing this one for instance. As we mentioned on our Master System list, the Shinobi IP has been oddly dormant for quite a few years now, which is surprising considering just how popular ninja and samurai games are right now. It's time for this Ninja Master to return for good. Number 5. Mortal Kombat 2 Mortal Kombat 2 is so much better than the original Mortal Kombat that it's almost embarrassing, but not as embarrassing as Special Forces. We'll see you in another video soon. The second entry in the Mortal Kombat franchise retains the graphic violence that made its predecessor such a phenomenon, only this time it's paired with more robust fighting game mechanics. As sequels go, you could say it's a flawless victory. Mortal Kombat 2's graphics and audio have both undergone a noticeable upgrade as well, lending the game a more atmospheric vibe. True, it lacks the depth or audiovisual polish of its successors, but its fantastic roster of fighters and more accessible mechanics trump these superficial improvements. Also, this one doesn't try and charge you 10 quid for a finisher, which is more than fine by us. Number 4. Fantasy Star 4 – The End of the Millennium Fantasy Star 4 – The End of the Millennium was the final instalment in the original, non-online multiplayer franchise, and it sure did end things on a high note. The team at Sega outdid themselves with the 4 Fantasy Star game, adding new wrinkles to the turn-based combat system and beefing up the storytelling with manga-inspired cutscenes. Fantasy Star 4 also included some welcome updates to the exploration aspect of the franchise's established formula. Now, players could interact with background items, making the Algol Star system feel more alive than ever before. Couple that with the deep battle system, the miles deep storyline and an absolute shagger of a soundtrack, and you have one of the best games of its millennium. JRPGs really came as their own during the 16-bit era, and Fantasy Star 4 was at the forefront of this revolution. Number 3. Street Fighter 2 Dash – Special Champion Edition Mortal Kombat devotees are probably howling right now, but let's be real. Street Fighter 2 Dash – Special Champion Edition deserves to rank higher on this list of the best of the Genesis. As good as Mortal Kombat 2 is, it comes up short compared to Street Fighter 2 Dash in every way that matters, which was also the first Street Fighter to make its way to a Sega system. Street Fighter 2's mechanics are deeper, its animations more fluid, and its roster better balanced and more varied. The Special Champion Edition builds on these strengths by making the original game's four boss characters playable, proving that it is possible to improve on perfection. No wonder people are still playing it today across the 16 million different ports over the years. Street Fighter as a whole has become a much bigger, shiny IP in the decades since this game, but this is arguably where it is at its most pure and fun. Number 2. Streets of Rage 2 While there is something to recommend about every entry in the Streets of Rage series, for our money the best of the bunch is Streets of Rage 2. A side-scrolling beat-em-up, it improves on the core mechanics established by its predecessor by adding more distinctly different playable characters and broadening the moveset at the player's disposal. Street of Rage 2 picks things back up after Mr. X's defeat, not that one, with the Syndicate, real missed opportunity to call them the Ragers in my opinion, and new character Skate teaming up to take on Mr. X and eat chicken once again. The graphics are also sharper and cleaner, and composer Yuzo Koshiro's techno soundtrack, with contributions by Motohiro Kawashima, straight up slaps. 
Subsequent Streets of Rage installments are essentially riffs on Streets of Rage 2, yet rarely reach the same heights as this absolute 16-bit icon. But nothing reaches the same height on the Genesis as... Number 1. Sonic the Hedgehog 3 Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is arguably the platonic ideal of what a Sonic game should be. All the core components of the franchise, the frenetic platformer gameplay, bright graphics, smart level design and ability to instill a deep fear of water into a whole generation of children are present and accounted for here, and polished to the nth degree. Yet Sonic the Hedgehog 3 does more than just iterate, it innovates too. There's a greater emphasis on exploration and non-linear gameplay in this third instalment, and to Sega's credit these additions gel well with the franchise's speed-oriented formula. From the first second to the last, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 is just pure fun. Honestly, we only have one complaint about Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and it's that it's best enjoyed in tandem with Sonic and Knuckles. But really, who ever complained about having too many Sonic games on their shelf? Unless it's 500 copies of Sonic Forces and several terabytes of banned ROM hacks. In which case, you gotta go to jail. And that was our list of the best Sega Genesis but really Sega Mega Drive games da, 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 of all time. Let's hand it to you. What did you think we got right? What do you think we got wrong? What was too high? What was too low? Be sure to let us know down in the comments down below and join us next week for the Sega Game Gear. While we call it the Mega Drive here in Britain, 